Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Radhika and I am a first year medical student at Queen's University Belfast. Today I want to talk about my journey into medical school. I want to talk about the aptitude tests, the interview process, the rejections I had along the way. So hopefully I can give you like a lot of honest advice and you can learn from my mistakes. There's a lot to cover, so I hope you find this video useful and let's get started. I'm going to do this in chronological order, so I want to start with August 2021. This is when my UCAT was scheduled. It was scheduled for the 31st of August and I rescheduled for I think September the 5th because I felt unprepared. I used Medify for the vast majority of my preparation and then I switched to Med Entry like a week before I believe. I personally thought that Med Entry was a lot more beneficial than Medify. I don't know, I feel like the questions on Med Entry were a lot more realistic and my score on Med Entry was pretty much identical to what I got my actual UCAT. With Medify, I was getting like 2800 in a lot of their mocks and a lot of the practice, whereas Med Entry was at least 200 points lower and I ended up getting 2620 band one sjt i didn't know how to feel about this score i knew that it wasn't a great score it was a very average score especially for the year i was applying considering there were a lot of reapplicants gap year applicants the ucat cutoffs for many universities went up i had to be very careful with the universities i could apply to because my ucat score severely impacted the number of universities that i could um, potentially be considered for. So now we come to October. This was when I was in the process of writing my personal statement and choosing my um, medical schools. I feel like this isn't something I've heard a lot of people say, but there are high UCAT schools and low UCAT schools. From memory, some of the high UCAT schools are schools like Bristol. Bristol have a very high UCAT cutoff. Um, you've also got King's College London, Barts. They would all require very high UCAT scores to be even considered for an interview, whereas some of the traditionally lower UCAT schools are schools like Liverpool, Angli Ruskin, um, Sunderland, Kiel, even Queen's University Belfast. They don't really have UCAT cutoffs, or at least that's what like was being promoted online. The thing with some of these schools is that if there's a very high UCAT cutoff, I feel like the interview process, once you get shortlisted for interview, you have a very high chance of being successful. Whereas with some of the lower UCAT schools, it's not very difficult to be shortlisted, but their interview is so difficult that it's very difficult to then get an offer, if that makes sense. What I'm trying to say is with lower UCAT universities, you want to be careful because if you look at the post-interview success rate, it can be lower just because there are so many applicants who actually manage to make it through and get the interview, then they have to really narrow it down to like who they want to give an offer to. Whereas for the higher UCAT unis, getting the interview is the very difficult part. But once you get the interview, you actually have potentially got a higher chance of getting an offer after. So you really want to keep that in mind when you're applying and make sure that you're not applying to schools that have a very low post-interview success rate. So where did I apply? I applied to Anglia Ruskin, Liverpool, Queen's University Belfast and University College London or UCL. The first three I applied to after reading um, advice on the student room, which is this amazing website. The student room is so useful because the people on there spend so much time answering questions and there's like a forum for literally every medical school which is amazing. The big problem in my year was to do with grade inflation. I was the year that GCSEs got cancelled however because I'm from Northern Ireland I did have to sit GCSEs in fourth year, I didn't in fifth year. It meant that a lot of people ended up with really really good GCSE grades like very inflated ones and so the university cutoffs in response to that went up. So the UCAT cutoffs like they literally jumped. I remember I think reading on the student room that Previously for Liverpool, it would be like 2,400 and something, but it went up to like 2,600 and I think it was above my UCAT score. And so I didn't get shortlisted for an interview at Liverpool. Same thing happened for Angley Ruskin. So that was two choices already down the drain. I think getting pre-interview rejections is so hard because you didn't even get a chance to showcase your knowledge and show why you are a good choice for that university. Like if I got a post-interview rejection, I'd be like, okay, that's fair, you know? I just didn't perform well at interview, but getting a pre-interview rejection, like it does hurt quite a bit. And if I was to reflect, I would say that I did not take my UCAT very seriously. I think I kind of thought that the aptitude tests don't really matter, which is mistake number one. 
Aptitude tests do matter, so prepare for them well. Universities are shortlisting people based on numbers. So, because my UCAT score was not great, I was like, okay, I'll do the BMAT. I always wanted to apply for a school in London, and my cousin, he went to UCL, so I was like, okay, UCL seems like a good choice. If my UCAT score had been very, very good, I probably would have applied to like Barts or Kings, but it wasn't, so I couldn't. So I was like, yeah, BMAT should be fine. Oh my god. The BMAT experience, my BMAT score was 4.4, 4, and 4A. So again, very average. UCL did not have, um, or at least they say, I don't know if they still do this, but they said that they didn't have a BMAT cutoff on the website. So a lot of people do apply for UCL. It's very difficult to get an interview. I know they say they don't have a BMAT cutoff, but I feel like everybody kind of thinks they do because I mean it's not a coincidence that the people with the highest scores get interviews first and then it just kind of keeps going down and it's always like higher than the average BMAT of the UCL applicant so for example if people get like a score of four four and four and that's the average the people that get interviewed are like five five and four it's crazy like you can see the statistics on their websites and even if you look at past student room threads people have thought about that they didn't reject me immediately they kept on like trickling it so it was like oh you're still in you know you, you're still considering your application and then I got a rejection in March after the interviews had been finished I was like why did you reject me in March like just reject me in December and put me out of my misery by January I knew that I wasn't going to get into like three of the four schools I had applied to which was such a fun Christmas break like such a great Christmas break to be thinking about that also funny story the medical school I'm at now Queen's they gave out offers on the same day I got my UCL rejection so I got a UCAS update and I was like oh my god did I get a Queen's early offer no it turns out it was my UCL rejection which was such a shit experience especially considering I was in the school bathrooms at the time and there were people in the stalls beside getting Queen's early offers and I was getting my UCL rejection like that was rough let's talk about rejections it's a lot to your self-esteem and your confidence to get any rejection but to get three rejections in the space of like three weeks that is that is so brutal like i oh my god like my heart was like breaking at this point and i'm laughing about it now but my mental health it was so bad at this time of year for context before getting these rejections i had had my queen's university belfast interview my interview i felt had gone well like i had done so much preparation because after getting my bmat score i think i just realized that the chances of me getting into london are like next to none so that's like one school already done. I was still waiting for Liverpool and Angley Ruskin to pull through, although they had been sending out invites and I hadn't gotten one. So I was like, okay, that's basically two schools ruled out as well. Like that's three gone, even though I got my rejections way later. They still kept me waiting, which was annoying. So I knew that I had to prepare well for my Queen's interview and I did so much MMI preparation. I've made a full video on MMI preparation, which you can watch um using the link down below but i did a lot of prep and i thought my interview went quite well but then i got this email basically because of grade inflation and deferred entries a lot of medical schools were under offering they didn't want to give out too many offers initially they were being very very cautious and so there were some people who like me had only had one interview and were waiting on like an offer and didn't get the offer immediately so queens gave out early offers i think in march and then the bulk of their offers in april and i didn't get that i was basically put on what's called a hold list what that basically meant was that in previous years i would have got an offer but at the minute they were under offering like i think the number of offers they gave out was equivalent to the number of seats they had i was just literally below the line which was really frustrating like i knew that i was very close to getting an offer because later on queen sent out a lot of rejections and i didn't get a rejection so I was like maybe I've got an offer then but I didn't really want to like you know think about it too much but this email was so devastating because I still had my A-levels to do and I was just hoping that Queens would give me an offer in April and they didn't unfortunately at the time but I had to like just pull myself together and only I know how much I studied for my A-levels. I knew that some medical schools give out offers on results day and Queens is one of those universities. I know people in the past that got in on results day so I was like if I can meet my offer criteria which I know was three A's 
then I do have a shot of getting in on results today because I'm so close. It's just this unfortunate circumstance, meaning that I'm like just below the criteria. Okay, so the camera angle might have changed because somebody just came into my flat, but I was really hoping that Queens would pull through. So it was a very weird situation because if by the 19th of May, I had not received an offer for Queens, I would automatically be rejected because that was the UCAS deadline. On the 19th of May, 2022, at 11 o'clock, in the morning i refreshed my ucas i've been refreshing ucas all morning and i refreshed ucas and i saw an update so it said that five out of five decisions have been made by my universities three of those three out of five were rejections one was an offer for biomedical science at queen's and now queen's medical school had made their decision i immediately went to rejections like i didn't even have that much confidence i i had no confidence i was like i i don't think i'm going to get an offer so i went to rejections saw the three rejections from the medical schools that had been rejected from pre-interview and i was like where's my queen's rejection that was the first question on my mind like i was like where's my queen's rejection gone and it wasn't there so i was like did i get an offer and i didn't want to think it but i was like should i go to offers tab and i went to the offers tab and yes under my biomedical science offer from queen's it said a100 medicine so i had gotten my offer and i just cried i think i cried a lot during that time period but for once the tears were happy i remember when i got my offer i immediately texted my careers teacher on google on google um what's it called can't even remember the name now because we don't use it google classroom she then texted my form teacher and she called my biology teacher and all of them like when i went to school the next day they were all so happy for me and it just boosted my confidence now that i'm making this video exactly like one year on there are a lot of things I want to talk about and I want to give you guys some pieces of advice I think had somebody given me would have made my application process a lot smoother. Know the application process is a marathon and not a sprint. It is very different for everybody. Like I have friends that got four interviews, four offers, and they just breeze through the process and that's fine. And then you've got people like me who only got one interview and got one offer. I know people that got four interviews and they got four rejections like it's so different for everybody so don't compare your journey into medical school with anybody else try and detach yourself from all of that and focus on your journey it might not be the way you want it to be but at the end of the day if you are a school leaver like as in you're still in school and then you're going to leave next year your a levels are your priority if you aren't your priority is strengthening your application doing well in your aptitude tests and doing really well in the interview process. The second thing I want to talk about is A-levels and knowing the medical schools that you are applying to. You want to know their policy. If you get your grades and you don't have a place at a medical school and you got rejected from them post-interview, then it's not potentially the end of the world because some schools like Queen's, the school I go to, they do get about offers and results say to people that got the grades. They have like a big long list and they rank everybody and they just go down the list basically. Remember, not everybody's going to meet their offer. A lot of other medical schools do that as well, so do your research. Some medical schools, however, if you have offers and you don't get the grades, they don't let you apply then again. That means that your choices are limited. Your A-levels, it is so important that you do well in your A-levels. You do well enough basically to try and get into medical school like you don't want to be in a position where you have loads of offers and then you didn't really revise for your a levels and then you got rejections on results day like that's not a position you want to be in either so focus on your exams it is really important as well that you actually do prepare for your interview whether it's an mmi or whether it's a panel interview at the end of the day you need to make sure that you are doing well enough because this is the whole i suppose defining moment in your application you've done all the work to get the interview it will basically define whether or not you get an offer lastly remember you can always take a year out to focus on yourself um gap years the idea of them seems scary because it's like this whole year out of school with no structure and you're basically strengthening your application because you didn't get in or you didn't get the grades or you just don't know what you want to do i think gap years are definitely a little bit stigmatized but it's so natural like there are so many people that i'm friends with who took a gap year and they say it was like the best decision they ever made because it basically solidified their choice and it strengthened their application and it gave them so much to talk about in their interview at the same time during the gap year they learned a lot from their mistakes during the first time round. don't be afraid to take a year out for yourself it is not the end of the world and like there are people on my course who are in their 20s they didn't really know what they wanted to do after they finished their initial degree so they took a year or two out it's so natural 
remember medicine it's not like a five-year um job it's literally like a full lifetime job so you have so much time to be a doctor you don't have to be a doctor the moment you leave school i hope this video about my journey into medical school was able to maybe relieve your anxiety because it was chaotic i hope that i was able to give you a lot of honest and useful advice and if you have any questions that you would like me to answer please leave them down below if you're applying for medical school this time i wish you all the best and i hope that your journey into medical school is a lot smoother than mine thank you so much for watching please stay safe and i will see you next time for another video bye